things that happen cause entropy in the universe to increase. And so you can imagine dispersal of matter. And so we have two bulbs connected by a stopcock. In one bulb, we have gas in the bulb vacuum. We know that as soon as we open that stopcock, the gas will go from the one bulb to another and be distributed between the two bulbs. You can also think about dispersal of energy. And so if we have two pieces of metal, one hot, one cold, and we put them in thermal contact, there'll be heat transfer from the hot one to the cold one. You have dispersal of energy. We know this occurs. There's also processes that disperse both matter and energy. So you imagine combustion of something. You're dispersing matter, you're producing gas particles, you're also dispersing energy. And so we saw previously that a great way of thinking about entropy is as a measure of number of configurations for the system. And so S equals K natural log W, or W is the number of configurations. This equation was developed by Boltzmann in the 1870s. Now there's also a thermodynamic definition or equation. Delta S of the system is equal to Q reversible over T. This was developed by Clausius in the 1850s. Often this is the best way of calculating change in entropy. And so if we go back to the idea of having two bulbs with a stopcock, we can actually calculate the change in entropy going from gas in one bulb to gas in both bulbs. Now the number of configurations is actually proportional to the volume raised to the number of atoms. And so delta S is going to be S entropy of the final minus S entropy of initial. We're using S equals K natural log W. And we end up with delta S equals K natural log W, v, w final over W initial. Now again, that fraction W final over W initial is equal to V final over V initial to the power of capital N, where capital N is the number of particles. Now below that, that capital N can actually come out of the natural log, and so I give you delta S equals capital N K natural log 2V initial V initial. Now the V initials cancel, now leave you with a natural log of two. Now, R is actually equal to Avogadro's number times the Boltzmann constant K. And so N will be equal to Avogadro's number times lowercase n. And so we end up with delta S is equal to NR natural log of 2. Kind of cool. And so we're able to calculate that using the statistical equation. Now we can also calculate it using the thermodynamic equation, delta S equals Q reversible over T. Now a couple of things we have to keep in mind is that Delta S is a state, or entropy is a state function, and so delta S does not matter on the path. And the other thing is delta S systems equal Q reversible over T. And so the process of opening stopcock is not reversible. But as long as we can come up with a reversible path, then the delta S is going to be the same for each path because of the state function. And so for the reverse isothermal expansion of ideal gas, we get that change in internal energy is zero, Q equals minus delta w, which is equal to the integral of p dv. Now, if we substitute nRT over v for their p, we get q reversible as nRT integral dv over v. We're assuming t is constant because it's isothermal. And the integral of dv over v is just equal to natural log of v final over v initial. And again, v final is 2v. And so we end up with that fraction becoming just 2, and so we have nRT natural log 2 for the Q. Now delta S is Q reversible over T, and so that actually gives us nR natural log 2. And so it's really kind of cool. We actually were able to calculate the change entropy for the system using either using both the statistical equation and the thermodynamic equation, and we got the same result. And so the change entropy of systems is equal to Q over T. Now, if there's not a change in temperature, and you're talking about for a system, maybe delta S of the system is equal to delta H over T. Now, if there is a change in temperature, then you do have to take the integral for the T because T is changing. Um, Q is going to be CV dT. And so delta S system is equal to integral of CV dT. If CV is temperature independent, then that CV can come out of the integral sign. And the integral of dT over T is just equal to, to the natural log of T final over T initial. And so we get delta S system is equal to CV natural log T final over T initial. And so the other one, another example that we're talking about was if we have two pieces of metal, one hot, one cold, and we put them in thermal contact, there's a transfer of heat. We can also calculate delta S for this process as well. Now, because there's no work done, dW is equal to zero, delta U is dU is equal to dQ, which is equal to CV dT. We're assuming CV is temperature independent. And so we get delta S is equal to CV natural log T final over T initial. And so for the hot hunk of metal, delta S is going to be CV natural log T final over T hot. 
For the cold hunk of metal, it's going to be CV natural log T fine over T cold. We're assuming we are the same identical pieces of metal, just different temperatures. And so delta S total is equal to delta S of the hot metal plus delta S of the cold metal. And so that gives us CV natural log TFT hot plus CV natural log TFT cold. That can be simplified to delta S equals CV natural log TF. Um, TF, which is T final squared over T hot T cold. The positive change entropy proves that the transfer of heat occurs going from the hot one to the cold one. Now in the two examples that we went through, dispersal of matter, dispersal of energy, we assume that those were isolated systems. And so the change entropy of the system was equal to the change entropy of the universe. Now typically we imagine that the universe being composed of the system and the surroundings, that the system is not purely isolated, and that heat and work can be transferred between the system and the surroundings. And so this picture this paradigm is very important again please remember universe is system plus the surroundings the only thing transferred between system surroundings is heat and work now the only so the only thing that's going to affect the entropy of the surroundings is going to be heat for the entropy of the system you can have heat affecting it you can also have the number of particles affecting the delta s of the system I should also remind you that delta S system equals Q reversible over T is only when there's no chemical reaction. You should remember that gases have higher entropy than liquids. And so when you go from liquid to a gas in a chemical reaction, or when you have a combustion producing a lot of gas particles, your delta S system is going to be pretty large because you're producing a lot of gas particles. That delta S system is not just due to heat. And so if there's no chemical reaction, then the delta system is Q over T. But if you do have a chemical reaction, then you have to do products minus reactants. Now for the surroundings, if we define Q, Q is typically defined as heat going from the surroundings to the system. And so for the surroundings, it's going to be minus Q over T because again, Q is defining as heat going from the surroundings to the system. Delta surroundings, we need to calculate how much heat is going through the surroundings and that will affect its entropy. But again, delta S system does not usually equal minus delta S surroundings because delta S system is not just affected by heat when you have a chemical reaction. And so entropy of gases are larger than entropy of the corresponding liquid, which is larger than entropy of the corresponding solid. And so if we start at a perfect crystal at zero Kelvin, our entropy is zero according to third law of thermodynamics. And as we heat it, our entropy is increasing. Now, in this equation on the graph, we're assuming that heat capacity is temperature independent, and so that gives a straight line. And then whenever we go through a phase transition, we see the jumps in entropy. Now, for the phase transitions, like going from the solid to liquid, your change in entropy is actually referred to as change in entropy for fusion. It's equal to enthalpy of fusion divided by the freezing point. The enthal entropy of vaporization is equal to enthalpy of vaporization divided by the boiling point. But again, we do not consider phase transitions chemical reactions, and so we can actually calculate a delta S just from the Q. But again, if you have a chemical reaction where you have bond, chemical bonds breaking or forming, you cannot just calculate delta S the system by Q over T. Now the heat needed to melt the solid at melting point is divided by the melting point is equal to the difference in entropy between solid and liquid. The heat needed to vaporize a liquid at the boiling point divided by the boiling point in Kelvin is equal to the difference in entropy between, between the liquid and the gas. So for exothermic reactions, does entropy of the surroundings increase or decrease? And so exothermic means that heat's being transferred from the systems of surroundings. And so for all exothermic reactions, Delta S of surroundings is increasing. You should also remember that delta H is less than zero for exothermic processes. For endothermic processes, where heat's being transferred from the surroundings to the system, delta S of the surroundings is less than zero. Again, please remember that we're defining system surroundings that, such that only heat and work can be transferred. Only heat is actually going to affect the entropy for the surroundings. Again, for the system, the chemical reaction can affect the entropy of the system. It's not just about heat for the system, but for the surroundings, it's all just a matter of heat. And so delta S of surroundings is equal to minus delta H over T. And so the delta S of universe is equal to delta S system plus delta S surroundings. 
We can put minus delta H over T for the delta S surroundings. And so we get delta S universe is equal to delta S system minus delta H over T. This is rather cool. You know, from the second law, it seems really confusing. How can we actually calculate the change in entropy for the universe? And with our little uh, paradigm of system surroundings, we see we can get the delta S of the universe just from the delta S of the system minus delta H over T of the system. And again, please remember the delta S of our system is typically more about th than just heat. Whenever you have a chemical reaction, you know, bonds breaking, bonds forming, that's going to affect the entropy of the system. Entropy of the surroundings is only affected by heat. Again, because only thing transferred between the system and surroundings is heat. Are all exothermic reactions spontaneous? And the answer is no. Exothermic reactions mean that delta S to surroundings is positive, and that's true for all exothermic reactions. But delta S universe depends on both delta S system plus delta S surroundings, so all exothermic reactions are not spontaneous. And so if delta H is less than zero, that corresponds to exothermic reaction, and if delta S system, delta S of the system is positive, then that means it's delta S universe is positive and spontaneous because delta H less than zero corresponds to delta S surroundings positive. If delta H is positive, that means delta S surroundings is negative. If delta S system is negative, then delta S universe has to be negative and that would be non-spontaneous. Again, spontaneous in this context does not mean instantaneous, but does mean occurs without any outside intervention. When delta H and delta S have the same sign, whether or not delta S universe is positive or negative depends on temperature. And so this is kind of a cool reaction. And by looking at it, we should be actually to be able to determine if delta S system is positive or negative. Often by looking at a reaction, all you have to do is count the number of gas particles. If you're going from pure gas particles to more gas particles, delta S system is positive. And so in this reaction, we're going from 13 gas particles to 18 gas particles. And so delta S system should be positive. Now, delta S surroundings depends on whether or not the reaction is exothermic or endothermic. Hopefully, you recognize the reaction as being a combustion reaction. And so heat is going from the system surroundings. And so delta S surroundings is going to be positive. Now, delta S of universe is just the system plus the surroundings. And so if the system is positive, the surroundings is positive, then delta S universe has to be positive. And so this reaction is going to be spontaneous at all temperatures. Again, that's assuming that the delta S's and delta H's are temperature independent. If we look at another reaction, here I have liquid to a gas. And so again, we're going from zero gas particles to one gas particle. And so again, delta S systems typically um, entropy of the products minus entropy of the reaction, reactants. And so delta S system is going to be positive. Now, to go from a liquid to gas, we always have to add heat. The enthalpy of the gas is always greater than enthalpy of the liquid. And so heat has to go from the surroundings to the system. So delta S of surroundings is going to be negative. Now we have system positive, surroundings negative, and so we actually cannot tell about the universe. And so whether or not this reaction is spontaneous actually depends on temperature. Now looking at the reaction, that makes perfect sense. By looking at the reaction, we know that if we're above 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to be spontaneous. If we're below 100 degrees Celsius, it's going to be non-spontaneous. If you look at this reaction, um, we're going from one gas particle to two gas particles, so delta S system should be positive. Now, we always have to add heat to break a chemical bond. And so heat's going from the surroundings to the system. So delta S surroundings is going to be negative. System's positive, surroundings negative. And so delta S universe, we don't know whether or not that reaction spontaneous actually does depend on temperature. And so things that cause entropy of the universe to increase, dispersal of matter, dispersal of energy, dispersal of both matter and energy. Um, Statistical way of thinking about entropy, S equals K natural log W. It's a great way to think about entropy. Entropy is just a number of measure of number of configurations. Thermodynamically, delta S system equals Q over T. It's a great way of calculating the change in entropy. Typically, you know, if we're looking at just heat, that's how we calculate the change in entropy. Remember, if we're looking at something like a chemical reaction, we have delta S system as products master reactants. Um, 
and we have to consider for the delta surroundings is due to heat. 